has strong pressures uh, into our communities and into our own world, and we have to, we have at the same time to, to sustain and to maintain our own ways of life, and to also be able to adapt and to confront these changes. So in order to do that, we also have to understand, we also have to reflect, we do research and uh, analyze how uh, yeah how we're going to confront and how we're going to deal with these changes. Tiene varios contenidos de los cuales principalmente está basada en el fortalecimiento de la soberanía alimentaria y la la producción para poder tener ingresos y pensar en empatar las necesidades modernas con las necesidades que también en las comunidades se generan. Ok, so, uh, coming back to the, to the plan de vida, it has different, uh, different contents, different chapters, out of which the number one would be uh, food security and food sovereignty and the uh, agricultural production. This as a mean or this as a, as, a, yeah, as a mean for having own incomes and be able to match the, 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 ne the necessities that are generated at the community level of uh, traditional necessities but also modern necessities. Great, thanks again. So how are you scripting some things on the board? <laughs> I just wanted to uh, say to Raul, I will, will you, JC, do the, do the reverse uh, translation just maybe quietly? Um, I just wanted to add to this question because it's critical. The way at least I understand, the way I understand this, and the work we've done it, is that in, in, at the community level, okay, Plan uh, de Vida, um, community plans, strategic, etc. It's critical. That is the deciding on who we are, why we are, where we're going. Um, that is that is the internal endogenous, call it what you will, but this is the critical capacity building, governance, restructuring, Viviana's point, reconnecting between communities level. At the same time, up here we've got other agencies Communities these days cannot just be autonomous units, never were, but increasingly have to engage with globalized. So this, at this level, this is where the you know, human rights um, and uh, CIHR comes into play. Sorry, I don't So, to allow them to catch up. What I was just saying is, this is where I understand a community uh, protocol comes in here. It becomes, this is the uh, community protocol. See, that is the interface. So communities don't have to put into that protocol, this is my point earlier, everything which is in the plan de vida, or whatever, at this level, this is a whole process unto itself, for the community, by the community, uh, etc. To help these communities communicate that and all of its complexity to business, to government agencies, to conservation uh, agencies, bodies and organizations, a protocol which draws on this in a kind of a focused way to give specific messages to each one of these or specifically one or the other is the kind of interface thing. But that's a, that's a working theory. So therefore I would really uh, make a distinction between the, the intrinsic importance of this plan de vida and all those processes of step one, subsequently deciding within the community, considering our plan de vida, who do we need to engage with, okay? And then we would say natural justice within the already bit of this really is like, right, what is the rights framework what, what are the rights that operate in this context here? These things. At the international and the national levels. And that protocol 
explains to these different agencies what the community wants, what the rights framework is, and therefore, as I said before, sets up the kind of dialogue that needs to then occur between those different agencies. I think it makes yeah, it sorry, much it? clearer because there was no, speaking to no. <laughs> Explaining the difference between a planned idea, which is broader, and the idea process, that makes it much more. That's just I mean, our way of viewing it. That's not true. It's just. But based on what we were saying this morning, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, why do you do you think that uh, El Plan de Vida is not a uh, biocultural protocol? Why do you say that? Because, well, first of all, I'm not saying that. Yeah. Okay. What I'm saying is that El Plan de Vida could be, but sometimes a Plan de Vida may have an enormous. So let me let me put it like this. You're a community and you want to engage directly with the forest department about a specific issue. If you put a plan de vida that's 600 pages long, full of all information about all sorts of very, very important things to the community, that may not be the most effective way of communicating your point to that government official. So it would be, we would say we will very happily support a community who wants to do that. It doesn't have to be called a plan de vida. It doesn't have to be called a community protocol. What we're saying is that I think the point is to take names out of it and to focus back in on this process here being a really intense community level process. Our message to this discussion on rights-based approaches is the rights-based approach is not just this thing here. Let's bring rights to this conversation. It's contingent on Again, the complexity that Viviana put her finger on earlier, uh, and that Raul has now spoken to in depth, um, and Sutej spoke to before. And once you've got that, if a community feels we have our total plan, and this is what we would like people to engage with, ¿por qué no? If they want to develop a more focused message for various government agencies, then they could do that. And just to say, I've, we've worked with communities and that when they've done this, they have a massive amount of information. Maps and sacred sites that they may not want to hand over. It's almost like there is an internal process and information generated that may want to be kept at the community level. And then, like the strategic decision, what do we need to communicate to a biotech company about our traditional knowledge and the way we manage it and may or may not share that knowledge. And that's a, that becomes an ancillary question. But um, Vincent, in terms of your question, do not quote me that I'm saying one thing is different from another in this. I think that's when it becomes problematic. But if you keep it at the, at the discussion and process, I'm hoping that makes some sense. I'm sure it does. Yeah, thanks, Anything other a question? Yes, I, I have a follow-up a follow up question for you, Raul, based on this explanation. My question is, what is the basis for the payments to the people, and what do the people give up in exchange for the payments? Los fondos que recibimos del Estado en, en términos eh, teóricos es un programa de incentivos para los pueblos o familias que conservan un bosque. 
pero en realidad nosotros no conservamos de manera condicionada nosotros somos de la cultura de conservación entonces las reglas los hacemos nosotros y el gobierno tiene que recibir nuestras reglas se ha comenzado muy bien espero que esto a futuro no se cambie reglas del Estado porque hasta el momento trabajamos con nuestras propias reglas So the funds are coming from, from the state and in theoretical terms they are a payment for uh, initiatives uh, no, for in, they are payment as incentives for families to conserve the conserve the forest but they, they do not conserve in conditional terms they come from a conservation culture which also means that they make their own rules and that they are not willing to take some rules given by the state and then it, this has in his view this has it started very well this has been a very good a uh, very good approach so far and uh, he hopes that this is going to stay like this lo otro es que eh, la organización es la que tiene un escenario preparado es verdad lo que decía eh, yo. nosotros ya nos dejamos robar el proyecto de conservación que en Ecuador se llama Socio Bosque entonces hay varias otras iniciativas que las mantenemos allí por respeto de la decisión de nuestros mayores pero en el transcurso del tiempo habrá que ir mejorando este sistema de trabajo porque también vemos que hay las presiones externas y será, eh, tendremos que trabajar fuertemente en este sistema de gobierno porque eso se llama conocer nuestros derechos para poder eh, 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 para comunicarse para interrelacionarnos con los de afuera con el Estado con ONGs con empresas, instituciones On another note, uh, on another note, it's uh, the, the organization has a, is the one that has some type of scenarios already prepared. It's true what uh, what the colleague says. Uh, in in our view, they already told us some ideas, they stole the, the idea of Socio Bosque and the, yeah, so there's another, some other ideas that our community has and it has them there, let's say on the, on the side uh, and we're not putting them over the table also because of respect to our elders but the truth is that the, that the system of government, of our own government has to, has to evolve, has to be further developed and uh, it has to be a continuous improvement also uh, to be able to, to communicate and to inter uh, inter yeah, interrelate with different uh, actors like business and the ones that uh, were mentioned before. Just, uh, mm. A clarification regarding the question. The Socio Bosque is a forest conservation program put, put in place by the Ecuadorian government. It's funded with the oil revenues. And in my perspective, it's an ecosystem and services payment scheme. But the government is it's one of those uh, new governments in Latin America. They're, no, they're really, um, they want to be away from, from the uh, markets, let's say. So they, they call it a, an incentive for poverty for poverty, uh, poverty reduction, for uh, uh, 
families that are uh, protecting the forest. They commit themselves to protect the uh, forest, but as Raúl said, in their case, it's, not, it's part of their life, of their, their, their lifestyle. They have to, uh, all the participants, they have to sign an agreement and make like a investment plan. What are they doing with the money? And the government monitors. It's, it's, the monitor system is not uh, excellent. It's like a random thing, but it's, they do some monitoring and this is it's good. And they have to uh, put in place an a investment uh, uh, plan and uh, to be responsible about the use of the money, the distribution of benefits. Yes. And uh, as Raul mentioned, the the idea of this of this plan is based on his on this uh, short look at people's experience. Like the, the original idea is, is based on their conservation experiences. Is this uh, the plan that is It's not online, but it's, it's a book. Actually, it's a really pretty book that they published with the uh, help of an, of an NGO. And if you want to have it, I can send it to you in electronic. Yeah, that's a PDF. And actually, at the moment, there, there will be an update in the, the life plan next year. We have been helping them to gather information. And they will be, they're preparing, they're always working on a, like an evaluation of the life plan. What was uh, useful, what was, um, let's say, a success and what was not used, was like a wish list in some cases, like they, they had a lot of ideas but weren't able to, to make them real, so that would be, it's, it's a good exercise for, for themselves to see what, it, uh, uh, how close is to reality and that would help them to, to plan for the next 10 years. I'm sorry, I asked so many questions. Um, so, I have taught uh, many years environmental law in the United States, and one of my students was from Peru about four years ago, and uh, she was very concerned about um, illegal timber harvesting, uh, harvesting of mahogany in indigenous lands in Peru, and that the state at that time was doing nothing to prevent it. And um, I think that this community uh, biodiversity protocol stands somewhat in the way um, large businesses or even small businesses coming into the land and, and just taking resources away. But I just want to see if if you have had any pressure like that, any incursions into your land where where others are trying to steal your resources, and and, and maybe how you protect yourself against that. En Ecuador y como en todos los lugares, eh, la madera es uno de los recursos que tiene mucha ambición para los empresarios. En nuestra área, antes de la, la organización nuestra, quiero decir, más o menos 10 a 12 años, ha sido intervenida por los eh, madereros ilegales So Ecuador like in everywhere everywhere else everywhere else around the world wood is a, is a resource that uh, generates a lot of revenues and it's pretty much precious for businesses and, uh, and businessmen. In our territories, before uh, we organized ourselves, 
it, the territory was basically invaded by illegal illegal loggers. En el proceso organizativo, nosotros hemos creado normas propias de uso de la madera más allá de la ley forestal ecuatoriana. Además, se corta la familia, corta la madera o vende la madera porque necesita dinero. Entonces, nosotros hemos generado otras iniciativas que pueda reducir la presión a la madera. So in the, in the organization process, we, we have also created our own norms and regulations uh, regarding wood and forest, forestry forestry laws, uh, forestry regulations, our own forestry regulations. And uh, in addition, we know that families 